There seems to be an obvious theme that takes place in our readings this morning. And that obvious theme is gratitude. But in order to understand the fullness of the gratitude, especially of Naaman the king in our first reading, we have to understand the backstory because we only get a small portion of what is actually taking place. First off, Naaman is actually a foreigner. He's not from Israel. He's actually the king of Syria. And Syria is one of these kingdoms that has come in and ravaged the northern kingdoms. Remember that Israel was united. And then they actually, uh, after Solomon's death, they actually were uh, disunited. They became separated. The northern ten tribes formed their own kingdom. The southern two tribes, basically Judah and Benjamin, formed their own kingdom, and thus they were separated. The northern kingdoms actually established their own kingdom, established their own form of worship. They established the temple actually in Samaria itself, where it became the center of, of worship and center of, eco- of economics and center of leadership for the northern tribes. But they quickly became unfaithful to God, and in their unfaithfulness to God, They were actually the first to be exiled, the first to be carried off into exile. And so one of those nations that actually came and attacked them was Syria. And so Naaman is the king of Syria in in coming to take over the northern tribes and carrying back many of those that they... uh, In taking over the the northern tribes, they carried people into exile. One of those... Uh, Israelites that they carried in exile actually began to work in the household of Naaman, was a slave in the household of Naaman. Naaman, the king, comes down with leprosy. Naaman's servant, who is not an Israelite, but his servant, his his, uh, main servant, hears hears one of the servant Israelites say, if only he would go to my king in Israel, he could heal him. And so Naaman's servant says to Naaman, why don't you, the servant girl says, go to the king of Israel, he can heal you, why don't you go and try it out? And so Naaman fills his bags with gold and silver to take to the king in order to be healed. When he arrives uh, at the feet of the king, the king says, who am I to have the power to heal you of this grave disease? And Elisha is in the other room and hears this conversation and comes out and says, come to me and I will intercede on your behalf and you will be healed. So Naaman goes to Elisha. Elisha says, all you have to do is go down to the Jordan River and bathe seven times. Plunge yourself into the Jordan River seven times and you will be healed. Naaman's response to Elisha's direction is, Are not the waters in Syria better than the waters here in Israel? Why should I bathe in in your river? Why can't can't I just go home and bathe and why can't I be healed there? And in anger, Naaman picks up his stuff and and decides to leave Israel. But it's actually the servants of Naaman who convince him, why don't you just do what he says? Naaman had in his mind, actually it's in the conversation, he says, why don't you just heal me right here and now? Why don't you just say the word? Naaman wanted some magical spell performed over him that would, that would cure him of his leprosy. And instead, Elisha gives him the simple direction of bathing in the waters of the Jordan. Naaman's servants convince him, just do what Elisha says. It won't hurt you. Let's just see what happens. He goes down, he bathes, he plunges into the water seven times, and he is healed. And in, the, and in Naaman's gratitude, he wants to bow down and he wants to basically worship Elisha. He wants to give him all of these gifts. And Elisha says, I will accept none of them because it wasn't me who healed you. Give thanks to the one who actually healed you. Give thanks to God who heals you. And so what does Naaman do? In thanksgiving, he gathers Two as much he gathers two mule loads of earth, it says. As much as he could gather, he gathers this dirt. He takes it back with him to Syria in order to build a temple to the God of Israel. And from that moment on, Naaman says, I will not worship anyone except the God of Israel. 
So there's this tremendous gratitude from Naaman to the God of Israel to worship. And what's interesting about this is that because it's in Israel in which he is doing this and the northern tribes were basically given over to the foreign nations because of their ingratitude to God for bringing them into the promised land, for giving them all that they had, and it's Israel who is punished because of their lack of gratitude to God. And this foreigner, this Syrian, who has plundered them, is the one giving thanks. It's this foreigner who recognizes the goodness of God and for the rest of his life gives thanks to God. And the Israelites have failed to do so. I think Jesus may have this story in mind when he, he sees these ten lepers that approach him in our gospel today. Ten lepers in the, nation of, in the nation of Samaria. The northern tribes basically is where this is. The Samaritans whom the Jews hate. The, Jew, the term Jew is actually a shortened version of Judahites, which is the southern two tribes. And so the Jews, it's shortened to Jews, so we understand the difference in the Israelites, which is the northern kingdom, and the Jews who are the southern kingdom. The Jews hated the northern tribes because they intermarried with all of these foreign nations that had come in and taken over their land. And so Jesus is walking in Galilee and Samaria, both in the northern kingdoms, and these ten lepers approach him. They kneel down before him and they cry out, Jesus, have pity on us. And he says, go and show yourselves to the priests. And we can see in the Old Testament, anyone who has leprosy, there is actually a formula for them to be blessed by the priests. And they are to show themselves to the priests, of course, from a distance. And the priests are to pray over them, to bless them in hopes that they will be healed. And so Jesus follows the Old Testament law. He says, go and show yourselves to the priest. Do the very thing that the, that, the old, that the old law says. But on the way, they are healed. And only one returns to give thanks to Jesus. Only one returns to give thanks to God for his healing. I think the message that Jesus is telling us and that we can learn from these readings this weekend is that we, number one, are foreigners. We are foreigners in the sense that we are not in the heavenly homeland. We have been kicked out, basically, of our homeland because of sin. Original sin keeps us from entering into eternal life. Original sin keeps us from being full members of the kingdom that God wants us to be members of. And so it's through baptism that we are made members of the kingdom of, again. It's through baptism that we are united to God. It's through baptism that we become members of the household of God. And so being a foreigner, being a leper, it's necessary for us to recognize that we cannot become members of the kingdom of God on our own power. There's nothing that we can do to become members of God's kingdom It's only through the work of Jesus Christ. It's only through his death and through his resurrection and his ascension that we are made members of the kingdom of God, of the household of God, because of the sacraments, because of baptism. And what's even more amazing is that that very word for giving thanks to give thanks is the very word we use to describe what happens on the altar. When we talk about the Eucharist, that word Eucharist literally means, it's a Greek word that means to give thanks. And so the very act of us being here in church, the very act of us coming to Mass is to give thanks to God and to give thanks to God for joining us to His kingdom, cleansing us of our leprosy, which is sin, and making us members of the household of God. You see... Leprosy was such a contagious disease that they had to ostracize them from the normal community. And they had to live in their own community by themselves. All the lepers lived together. They were kicked out of the community. They were kicked out of the kingdom in a sense. We, because of our sin, are kicked out of the kingdom. And we have to be cleansed in order to to be brought back into the kingdom. 
And that cleansing is the forgiveness of sins. And we come together to give thanks to God at the Mass. And just like the leper that kneels down and gives thanks, we kneel down to give thanks to God who becomes present on the altar, who gives Himself to us in the Holy Sacrament, in the Holy Eucharist, so that we may be reunited to Him, that we may be caught up into eternal life. Sometimes we can be like the other nine lepers, the nine who don't come back and give thanks. And maybe we don't go to confession regularly for whatever reason. We don't want to be in the kingdom, and it's through that sacrament after baptism that unites us to God and keeps us in the kingdom because we are kicked out of the kingdom any time that we commit mortal sin. Sometimes we don't want to come to Mass. Sometimes we don't come to Mass. And we don't want to give thanks to God for the very salvation that He has won for us. We are like those other nine lepers who don't return to Christ to give thanks. And we stay away. Our God continues to invite us to Himself. He continues to invite us every single week to come and give thanks to Him. But it's not quite enough. Our entire life is owed to our God. There's nothing that we can do to pay God back for what He has done for us, for what He has given us. We owe everything to Him. And the only way that we can become grateful to God for everything is to spend time every single day in gratitude to God for the very gifts that He has given us. To even naming the very things that He has given us. So we actually become grateful And we actually recognize God's presence in our life. And when we can have that gratitude in our life, and we recognize the presence of God in our life, our entire life begins to change. Our entire life begins to be lived out of that gratitude. Instead of focusing on ourselves and what we can do ourselves, we begin to see that none of this is possible without Him. I pray that we may always be like the one leper who comes and gives thanks. I pray that we may always have this spirit of gratitude in our lives and to live out of that gratitude and help others to see the presence of God in their lives through that gratitude as well.